a little um, socket with a, with a screw on it, and the electrode then can be is screwed deeper and deeper into the brain stem, and you can test at any moment according to the depth of uh, it goes in fractions of a millimeter of what you're stimulating, and and these creatures are not merely uh, stimulated by wire. They are fitted with a, a miniaturized radio receiver weighing less than an ounce, which is attached to them, so that they can be communicated with at a distance. I mean, they can run about in the barnyard, and you can press the button, and uh, the, this particular area of the brain to which the electrode's been screwed down to will be stimulated, and <coughs> you will get these uh, fantastic phenomena that a, uh, a sleepy chicken will suddenly get up and rush about, or a, uh, an active chicken will suddenly sit down and go to sleep, or a hen will suddenly start sitting as though it were, uh, were hatching out an egg, uh, or a rooster will start fighting, or will suddenly go into a state of extreme depression. Uh, the, uh, the whole picture of the absolute control of the drives is, a, uh, is terrifying. And uh, in the cases, the few cases in which this has been done with very sick human beings, uh, the effects are evidently very remarkable too. I was talking last summer to, uh, in England to Gray Walter, who is the um, most eminent exponent of the electroencephalogram techniques in England, and he was telling me that they, he's seen hopeless uh, inmates of asylums with these things in in their heads, and that uh, these people were suffering from uh, uncontrollable depression. And they were, they'd had a, the electrodes inserted into something resembling, evidently, the pleasure center of the rat. Uh, anyhow, when they felt too bad, they just pressed a button in the battery in their pocket, and he said the result was fantastic. The mouth would go down, would suddenly turn up, and they would evidently feel, for, I don't know for how long at a time, very cheerful and happy. So that <coughs> here again one sees uh, the most uh, uh, extraordinary uh, revolutionary techniques uh, which are now available uh, to us. Now, the, uh, I think w w what is obviously perfectly clear is that th for the present these techniques are not being much used, except in a purely experimental way. But uh, I think it is extraordinarily important uh, for us to realize, first of all, to, uh, to realize what is happening, to make ourselves acquainted with what has already happened, and then to use a certain amount of, of, of imagination to extrapolate into the future uh, the sort of things that might happen I mean, what might happen if, uh, if these fantastically powerful techniques uh, were used by unscrupulous uh, people in authority? What on earth would, would happen? What, what sort of society would we get? And uh, I think this is peculiarly important uh, because as one sees in looking back over history, we have allowed in the past all those advances in technology which have profoundly changed uh, the social and individual life, we've allowed them to take us by surprise. I mean, it seems to me that uh, during the late 18th century, and early 19th century, when the uh, new machines were making possible the factory system, it was not beyond the wit of man to see what, the, uh, to look at what was happening and to project into the future and maybe to forestall the um, really dreadful consequences which uh, plagued uh, England and most of Western Europe and most of this country uh, for about 50 or 60 years, the, uh, the horrible abuses of the factory system. I mean, if uh, a certain amount of forethought had been devoted to the problem at that time, if people had first of all found out what was happening and then used their imagination to see what might happen and then had gone on to work out means by which the worst uh, applications of the new techniques should not take place, well, then I think uh, Western humanity might have been spared about three generations of utter misery which was imposed upon the poor at that time. 
and uh, similarly with the various uh, technological advances now. I mean, it's quite clear we have to start thinking very, very hard about the problems of automation. Uh, and again, I think we have to think still more profoundly about the problems which may arise in relation to these new techniques which may contribute uh, to the, this ultimate revolution. Our business is to, first of all, as, as I say, to, to be aware of what is happening, then to use our imaginations to see what might happen, how this might be abused, and then, if possible, to see uh, that the enormous powers which we now possess, thanks to these um, uh, scientific and technological advances, uh, shall be used for the benefit of human beings and not for their ultimate degradation. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you.